Aloha, I'm Mark Glick. Welcome to Hawaii State of Clean Energy. I'm chairman of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, and this is the Policy Forum's biweekly uh, program where we cover the latest advances uh, on the energy uh, forums, uh, policy objectives, and, and the latest advances in energy policy and plans in the state of Hawaii. In essence, this show covers the unfinished business in Hawaii's energy transition. And today we're joined by a very special guest, Ed Sniffen, who's the uh, Deputy Director of Highways at the Hawaii Department of Transportation. And I uh, want to tell you a little bit about uh, Ed first, but uh, this week's show is really going to be about the road usage charges and the um, really important work that's gone over the last several years to be able to get a handle on uh, how uh, the Department of Transportation intends to be able to make up the dwindling uh, revenue to cover our uh, road maintenance um, because of uh, the lesser income that's coming in from fuel taxes. Um, you know, I've known Ed for a number of years now. He's been uh, head of uh, the Hawaii uh, Division of the Department of Transportation now since 2015, I believe had a similar role in 2010, 2011, uh, and then he went off into Kamehameha Schools and had another uh, several uh, really important positions, including uh, being executive assistant to the mayor of the Sydney County of Honolulu. Uh, we've always known him as being an extremely effective administrator and public servant and uh, worked very closely on something that really kind of led to this sort of uh, push to, to fundamentally deal with uh, the dwindling supply of, uh, of fuel taxes. Uh, when I was uh, energy administrator, we had proposed a, or had developed a, uh, a transportation energy uh, assessment uh, to try to get a handle on uh, really how were we gonna make progress in moving away from fossil fuels for transportation. Uh, and it became absolutely clear that a lot of the advances we we were hoping to make really couldn't be carried out, uh, particularly if um, transportation uh, department couldn't carry on uh, some of some of these improvements because of diminishing fuel taxes. So I know that Ford Fujigami at that time, uh, before he became head of transportation, uh, he was. Uh, uh, head of the airport division, but I know that uh, when he took on the role of being head of transportation, this was became a really big issue. And then I know that it uh, became a huge priority of, of Ed. So I want to engage in a discussion with uh, you today, Ed, and uh, first give you a, a sense of, uh, give us a little bit of a sense of, um, you know, how did you take this on and, you know, what, what did it mean to, uh, your portfolio of business uh, and how important was it for you to get a handle on this question? Absolutely, and thanks so much for inviting us. Love to be on, I'd love to see you, Mark. Um, I got to tell you, I appreciate all your help during the time that you were energy chair, um, head of the energy office to make sure that we could move forward on a lot of our clean energy initiatives. And because of you, we were allowed to move forward on our ESCO contracts that cut out 50% of our, our energy consumption throughout the state highways. So I really appreciate all the work that we had done. And I appreciate that you understood the complexity of <clears throat> moving forward with clean energy or clean, clean energy vehicles while making sure that we have the funding necessary to take care of the needs of the public. Um, as we had talked about during that time and going forward, <clears throat> um, the reduction in fuel tax is a bittersweet thing. We are all for it. We're, we're pushing for clean energy vehicles more on the system, electrifying the system to ensure that we can get rid of the range anxiety to allow more people to convert faster. <clears throat> But we also got to make sure we have enough funding in our system that we can carry out the needs of the public, make sure we maintain the roads that we have, make sure we make them better, make sure we improve the congestion, make sure we can match those, those really important federal funds that come through. <clears throat> so looking at all of those things in that perspective, <clears throat> we started looking at what kind of methodology we could use to ensure that we could capture um, everyone paying into the system their fair share. At this time, I would, I would argue that the gas tax is a really elegant way of collecting. We don't even know that we're paying it a lot of times. <clears throat> you pay that 16 cents for, for state fuel tax every time you go to the pump for every gallon you pay, but you don't have to pay it all at once. The, the problem with that system though is 
a lot of people can't afford to convert to clean energy vehicles. So those people are now uh, paying for the use of the roadways when others aren't. And that, that was the crux of things, that equity piece was broken. So looking at a pay per mile or road uses charge fixes two things. Not only uh, making sure that we have the revenues necessary uh, to take care of all the needs of the state, but also we make sure that everybody's paying their fair share and nobody, and we're not balancing this on the backs of anyone. Yeah, so, you know, you raise a really good point. So uh, the fuel tax really didn't kind of, you know, in a sense, the more gasoline you bought meant the more use, but in a certain sense, it really didn't capture all of the kind of miles that you were traveling, really. You're exactly right, absolutely. So in Hawaii, um, the, the more affluent you are, the closer to town you can live, the right. easier your commutes are. The, um, the more you wanna, um, the, 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 less, the less affluent you are, the further on you gotta live. Now, uh, fuel tax doesn't capture your use when you consider congestion. For those on the leeward coast who are used to driving at hour 20 minutes in and hour 20 minutes or hour 30 minutes home, there's a lot of time that they're burning fuel on the, on the system when they aren't even moving. So getting, that, getting out of the fuel tax business and getting into the road uses charge makes it, makes it fair for everybody. So what was the process that you went to try to get a handle on this? I mean, how did you take this on? It's such a big deal switching essentially your whole revenue. I mean, it's like if, if you're in business, this is like changing your business model, right? Absolutely. Right now, I just got to kick back. Department of Tax Taxation kick, cut me a check every quarter, every quarter, and we can move right. forward. Yeah. So now we have to look look at a couple of things, right? Knowing that we have these issues on the state side means that we're having them on the federal side as well. On the federal side, you, we all pay 18 cents for a federal gas tax. But over the last 10 years, um, Congress has been kicking in billions from general fund into the gas tax because there just isn't enough fund there. So it's, it's just yeah. not sustainable as we go forward. Knowing that, knowing that we have a problem, knowing that the feds have a problem, eventually everybody's going to convert to something. So we wanted to make sure we could take the lead on a pilot uh, to show everybody what we could do. Uh, we applied for a grant with Federal Highways and we got $4.5 million to run a study that we started in 2019. On that first step that we took um, on that study, we made sure that we tied the public in. Before we even did our stuff, set up our study, we wanted to make sure we got in feedback or feed in from the public to say, hey, these are the things we like, these are the things we don't like, this is what we know and don't know. So we said, why don't we take a, well, yeah, why don't we take a look at that slide? Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. Right. We have a slide from that slide number one. Yeah. That slide number one shows um, initially when we first started this off, we sent out surveys to the public. Uh, we had calls that, that went out to everybody. Then we had 14 town halls throughout the state to make sure we could start talking story about road use charge, what it was, and what we thought would be a good way to move forward. And we had really interesting discussions with the public. Some people didn't even know they were paying a gas tax. Right. Some thought their gas tax was $2,000 a year versus the $70 to $75 that it actually comes out to. Right. Some thought we're going to put this road uses charge on top of the gas tax. We're going to double up your costs. And others thought that they were, we're going to take that money and push it out to on different slush funds for different um, elected officials. So we had that good conversation with everybody to make sure we could set up this study to address everyone's concerns and let everybody know how we're moving forward. Second step to this was we sent 360,000 bills out to everybody. Now, of course, they're fake bills. And we just showed them what you would have paid if we had a road use charge versus what you, you paid based on your mileage and the type of vehicle you had um, in gas tax. I saw that. that. I received one of those. You did. Awesome. Did you make, did you make, did you have to pay more pay less? Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it actually looked like um, I would pay a little bit less. So this, was, this is the way it came out, actually. When we had our meetings in rural communities, they're really upset that we were going to charge them for a mile because they felt like they're being targeted. They, right. they have to drive more every day, so they're going to have to pay more, which is right, um, which is the way the gas tax is set up as well. But what they found was, because in rural communities, the vehicles are a little larger, and they're right. less efficient, they actually pay less in, with a road usage charge than they're doing right now. Uh, those nearer town paid more because, um, because of the, the fuel efficiencies that they had. So it was really good for everybody to see what it would look like, and to see exactly what numbers we're looking at between the range of $60 to $75 on average for everyone. I mean, that's what they're generally paying. Some paid a $5 more, some paid $5 less, but in general, about the same. After we did that portion, we did a, a study, a hands-on study to get 2,000 um, plus people to actually drive through the system and, and try to see different technologies it would use to track them throughout the system. So we um, do this road user charge. 
and all of that is being pushed into a report that we're looking at releasing next month. So it's going to be exciting. To, um, like I said, like you just hit on the head that some people didn't even know that they're paying the tax, and others didn't know what, where that money was going to go. On slide number seven, it shows in general how people felt um, when we initially started talking about things, and then how they felt at the end. So we did some surveys in the beginning, in the middle, and the end of the survey, and you can see that in general, those that support got stronger throughout the process. Yeah. Uh, those that that have electric vehicles who don't want to pay that additional cost got stronger in the opposition <laughs> throughout the process. And but the big thing for us is we saw we saw that support um, ex increase for those that supported uh, that supported the process in the beginning, and we also saw those that were just unsure decrease tremendously. And which is where we wanted to be. We wanted to make sure that people made an informed decision, whether they support or not. Um, yeah. Throughout the process, we wanted to make sure they were informed. So that's what I mean, we saw. About. This is good public policy, and and I think this is really important. I mean, we we want to be able to sort of exposed to the, to the public when things were actually being done correctly. You guys took on a very difficult subject. You did a, a very sound methodology. You went through and you appropriately engaged the public uh, and informed the public. And now you have, a, a, I guess, a more informed and, and uh, supportive uh, group of people that are now about to uh, better contribute uh, to better roads. Absolutely. And, you know, we really appreciate the public support in all of this, not only coming in for those 2,100 or so that came into that study, but for all of those community meetings, it was packed rooms the whole time. Oh, yeah. So people made their time to come out and give their opinions. They sent in a, a bunch of emails and letters to ensure throughout the process we were informed how the public felt throughout. And it allowed us to guide our study throughout to make sure that we could take care of all those concerns or at least make sure we studied those concerns to find out where we go. Right. In the end, right now, what we're looking at is we know we got to convert. We have to go to a road use charge. Now we got to figure out how we do it. Uh, we, definitely, we want to be ahead of the federal government because the last thing I want to do is when they say start converting, I don't want to be behind them, right? Right. So for us, we found that the easiest way to do this is to make sure we started off with a small group. So this, we decided, in general, we'll focus just on the EVs first. So those EV owners, that's about 20,000 vehicles on the system, less than 2% of the 1.2 million vehicles that we have, we'll give them an opt-in. So at this time, there's a registration fee that you must pay if you're uh, an EV owner um, of 50 bucks, a flat rate. You pay that no matter what. Yeah. Uh, what we're saying is, instead of paying the 50 bucks, if you want to opt into the road use charge program, there's a potential you pay less. So we could go through uh, using your mileage that we track on your safety inspection, at the end of it, if your mileage is less than the that, then you would have paid the fifty dollars. You pay whatever that is, that that smaller amount. But right. at the end of it, we're still going to cap you. We're not going to just make you pay a um, hundred bucks if that's what it comes out to. There's going to be a cap to it. We found that's the easiest way, and not just for the public, but for us as well. Like I said, yeah. gas tax was easy. I just got to sit back and collect the check. But now I got to make sure I upgrade my systems to ensure that we can do this. Yeah, I'm sure that was one of the more stickier issues because obviously the EV owners, you know, got a uh, incentive uh, because of us attempting to stimulate uh, movement towards non-fossil fuel vehicles, and and obviously and there was good reason to do that, but at the same time those vehicles are contributing to road degradation, and and they use the roads. So uh, the planners and and many thought leaders and analyses had shown that it would be appropriate for all users to contribute, right? Absolutely, and this is why I really appreciate leadership on all of this, Mark. I mean, you, ca you capture this better than most uh, in these kinds of discussions. One of the things that I'd love EV owners to understand as well, on top of that, is we're gonna make it easier for them too. Um, yeah. The Biden administration and the Congress had pushed in about 4 million per year for Hawaii to start pushing more electrification onto the system. We're going to start off with seven electric, um, new um, electric vehicle charging stations at seven different locations across the state with 150 kilowatt four port chargers. And that's required by this federal, uh, federal bill that we have right now. The bipartisan infrastructure law. Awesome. Awesome. <clears throat> and after that, we'll start pushing out um, into different areas outside of the, the corridors that are required by, by the feds. So there's a bunch of money coming in, not only from the formula funds, but also from discretionary funds that we're going to capitalize on to ensure that EV owners in Hawaii have it very easy to find an area to charge. Well, as an EV owner, I really appreciate that. I know that uh, many uh, EV owners do not have the 
uh, great flexibility or, or the um, great fortune to be able to charge at home. So having these public fast charge stations on the highways or right off the highways and to be kind of orchestrated by you uh, is a huge, um, and it, it's, it's critical, frankly. That infrastructure is difficult to build and at least the initial ones need, need some public assistance. I, I absolutely agree with you. The cool thing is uh, HECO and KIUC, the, the electric companies are on board, fully on board, fully understanding that they want people to charge during the daytime so they don't, we don't all blow up the, the network at night. Well, we, had, we had you know, some questions. Uh, you already anticipated one, which was the one about the EVs. But you know, a, a fundamental question is now that you have essentially got the report, um, you've really had a, well, I guess the overall finding is that the road use charge is an appropriate thing and it ought to be pursued? Absolutely, absolutely. That's the recommendation we're making to all policymakers now, that it's, it's feasible, it's prudent, we should move forward. Well, so then what's a realistic time frame and how would you take the next steps? So from our perspective, the next step would be introducing a bill in the in legislature next year um, to provide this opt-in program for EV only. That would be the first step. And we would request that we get six months to start up on it to ensure that we're ready um, for the population on which I'm moving forward. That, that would be the first step for us. So, so Senator Gabbard, are you, are you listening? Uh, <laughs> so, so basically, one of the things that we'll do, and you know, we, we now have reinstituted uh, the Energy Policy Forum, the legislative briefing. Uh, you know, we should make this a key topic, and we'll have the energy chairs and the transportation chairs uh, it'd be, be wonderful, actually, to have a draft. Absolutely, I would love that. And this year, actually, there was a bill in session that went in. We didn't drop it, which is really cool. <laughs> and one of the legislators did. So we supported it tremendously. It just wasn't the right time for... Well, you hadn't announced your findings. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so that, that's kind of important. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. But we couldn't go against it, right? It's sure, <laughs> sure. No, I mean, it was, it was definitely in the right track <laughs> so that's really important so uh, i guess uh e extremely important for most of these users you know obviously inspections are pretty easy to do today <laughs> you know you go there you know if you have everything in pretty much in order and you got fluid and you <laughs> you know your your wipers work and your tires aren't too bald you know you get approved pretty quickly so how is this going to complicate the inspection process it won't, because the only, the only information we need from this for road usage charge will be how many miles you drove um, from the time you had your inspection last year to this. Which is pretty and much what you're already doing, right? It's already in there, exactly. So that information just gets uploaded into two platforms, one on the highway safety side and one on the road usage charge side. So it's wow. a pretty simple conversion right now. That, that's, it. that's it. So basically you're saying this in terms of, you know, typically when, you, when you're passing new policy, there's this, always these questions, particularly in the committees, you know, what would be the burden, you know, to taxpayers and so on. So basically, there's no burden. No, not at all. For us, the only, the only things that reason that we have that 1% increase on everything is to ensure that we have the personnel necessary to track and to right, collect right. and to enforce. Those are the three big things. Yeah, so enforcement, what's, what's that? I mean, just so, to make sure that people are reporting and reporting correctly, they're accurately. Uh, reporting and paying. Those are the two follow-ups that we're going to have. I see. Yeah, in those areas. Okay, so, so the payment will be based on, so there will be a billing. Yeah. So that, that's actually, I mean, that, that's actually part of the answer as well. So um, obviously the, it won't change the inspection process, but there will be an additional step, which is instead of this thing where, you know, you, you currently got gasoline and it was included in your, in your gasoline bill. Like you said, you didn't have to do anything. Uh, now you actually have to uh, collect money. Absolutely. So are, are you gonna do that through a third party or is it something you're gonna build the capacity? Like you said, you have to have people to track it and so on. So there's two scenarios that we're looking at. One is to use our existing workforce to build that, that second platform for us to bill out to the community, or we use something that's already available. We use the city and county Who's already doing it for us? Um, oh, through registration fees and weight taxes, and I'm leaning more towards the latter because they're already set up for it. 
So, so you'll issue the report in June. Um, people who listen to this show will, will know pretty much what, what's already happened, uh, you know, what, what the findings are going to be. Um, and uh, there will be a push for legislation. Absolutely. The push is for the legislation, and in another six months, we should be up and running. That's great. That's great. I mean, since, since there has been such a thorough investigation of this, uh, and since it doesn't add any sort of burden on, on the uh, taxpayer um, and the processes, one would think that this would be a pretty straightforward process. It's something hopeful of. Um, some complications come in when we look at the, the different levels of tax, of, of gas tax, federal, state, and county. So, of course, my push is going to be to get the counties on board to go through road usage charge versus a gas tax. We could get rid of that as well. Right. And then we'll be ready for the federal government to convert at some time. So hopefully we'll have it all collected and all at once. Well, I, I think, you know, it'll be very helpful uh, for you to point out something that I, I didn't really uh, think too deeply about was that, and, and actually didn't know to the extent that you explained that uh, essentially this whole fuel tax issue is being subsidized by the federal government to make up for shortfalls. Absolutely. So, so essentially, this makes that whole process more self-sufficient and allows, you know, I, the taxpayer who's going to pay one way or the other uh, essentially won't be providing subsidy uh, to, to kind of fill in gaps for a program that really wasn't working anymore. Oh, you're absolutely right. And that's where we want to get to. In general, it's about the funding, the revenues, to make sure that we can do what we, what we need to. But it's also about the equity piece. Everybody should know when I pay a tax, I know exactly where my money's going. And that's what the, the crux of this situation is. Oh, that's extraordinary. I mean, I, it's, it's so wonderful to hear such a clear explanation uh, you know, and a good policy process. Any other, uh, you know, we've got a little over a minute uh, left, minute and a half. Uh, any other things that you want to bring to our attention that's going on that's you know, sort of exciting within highways? Yeah, definitely. I mean, to, related to this energy sector, we want to make sure that we are cleaner in our operations daily, of course. So yeah. the money that's coming into our federal, uh, into our state system, not only is, is for roads and bridges, but for cleaner roads and bridges. We're using better materials for our asphalt pavements to ensure that we don't have to pay for the next 20 to 25 years once we touch a road. We're using CO2 and train concrete to make sure we can put waste into our concrete products to make them better over time and capture some of those, those emissions that we want to get rid of. We want to make sure that we put waste into our, our AC roads as well. So we're running plastic pavement um, technologies to ensure we can take some of our trash and put it into the roadways to make it better as well. All of those different initiatives um, definitely cost a little bit more for us to do, but it's so much more beneficial to the environment uh, to ensure that we're, our Hawaii today gets better and better even with um, as we service everyone in the way they need to be. So that's where we're going to go. Oh, that's outstanding. You know, our guest today, uh, Ed Sniffen, uh, Deputy Director of Highways. Um, kudos to you, uh, your department, and of course, the Jade Boutte and the uh, wonderful work that's going on at, uh, you know, at the Department of Transportation. Uh, you know, I can't thank you enough for taking the time out of your busy day. Uh, to walk through this road use charge uh, program and the exciting uh, future for it, hopefully, uh, later this year and in next legislative session. Uh, I hope you'll join, and I hope, I hope you'll uh, have an opportunity to join us uh, again. Would love to. Thanks so much for the invitation. This has been a blast. Okay, thanks so much. That's uh, close out for uh, Hawaii uh, State of Energy, and uh, good evening. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn.
and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.